guys welcome back to my channel where we spill tea left right and everywhere in between in today's video we are covering lana rhodes making an appearance on the jeff fm podcast and trisha paytas's take on the johnny depp versus amber heard situation you are not ready for this you guys know what to do with the subscription button and the notification bell so no time to waste and let's spill some tea lana rhodes was a guest on the jeff fm podcast this week and honestly it was a genuinely fun and interesting episode of the podcast Lana Rhodes, or Amara Maple, is a former adult film star and now hosts a podcast called Three Women, One Kitchen with Olivia Davis and Alexa Adams. Lana and Mike Malak dated on again, off again for a while before finally splitting. Lana said on the BFF's podcast that the reason for the breakup wasn't actually due to Mike flirting with other women, which he apparently did often, but was because once they had finally decided to move in together, Mike broke off the relationship. The day of the move. This situation repeated itself with the couple getting back together and again making the decision to move in together but quote another reason solidified the breakup. Apparently Mike decided he would rather make content with face banks the day of the move in and that was the final straw for Lana. Mike said later in an interview that the breakup was actually mutual and that they just couldn't make it work and he says something similar again during the Jeff FM podcast which we are going to talk about today. Jeff returns to his studio after shooting podcasts on yachts and whatnot recently and seems happy to be home, but he shares some news of a type of skin cancer that he has been diagnosed with. Form of skin cancer. It is? Whoa. It is. No way. Way. Why do you sound excited? Like you just no, want to no, 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 Tesla. No, no, not excited. Like, but yeah, like, like, really? It was Tesla's mind? No, no Kyle, no, I have cancer, not, bro. Oh, <laughs> I had it operated yeah. off. Oh, they, they burned. So it's they, they cut it off and they burned. No worries, though. He got an operation and it was removed and he clarifies that it was super mild and most likely everything is going to be fine. He jokes that out of all of his 3 million followers that have seen him shirtless on social media every day, no one notices the growth on his chest, even though people are quick to point out anything else and offer unwanted advice constantly. Jeff welcomes Lana Rose onto the show who is rocking some super cute new red hair and it's clear that the boys on set are really excited. How are you doing Steven? How are you holding up over there? <laughs> I'm great. You gonna be able to make it through this whole episode? Yeah, no I'm fine. Can you look at me for that long Steven? <laughs> yeah. you, want, you, want some, you want some sunglasses or something? Yeah, um, <laughs> Jeff asks Lana about what her type is in men, and I think he's shooting his shot here. We've we've had a little a little flirty online moments, but Mike was in the middle because you were dating him. Yeah. I, do you have a type? Is it are me and Mike similar in type? <laughs> do we both do YouTube and we're from the East Coast? Because I no, I, I actually don't like YouTubers. Lana explains that she had a crush on Jeff before, but not because he's her type, but rather that he reminded her of somebody else. I asked you to do the hyperbaric chamber with me. We could be stuck in a box together for an hour. That would be awesome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sounds that sounds very intriguing, but also I'm terrified. And you can't get out, right? Like they lock no, you. In. Is this? cute like they're definitely flirting lana gets more into what she is doing these days and since having her baby she has moved away from content creation and is focusing more on the business side of things she creates content for other people but is no longer too concerned with making her own and her time is more spent taking care of her child as she has no help or nanny or anything like that yeah so during the week i take him to all the meetings i take him to podcasts i just try to stay as busy as possible and then on the weekends that's the one time that i do have help and that's like okay i'm gonna go and just like be me and wild and free because you i feel like you really need a balance jeff doesn't let the convo get too far away from figuring out what exactly lana's type is in men What's your ideal man let's hear yeah. it because do you have a type because i i don't really have a type I, I like all different types of women i'm back dating again i was in a rough spot mentally for a while that's when i think you were hitting on me and i was like i don't want to see yeah. anybody lana herself also says that during pregnancy and afterwards she kind of hid herself away and didn't want to be out there but since having her baby she is the happiest she's ever been and has just been on cloud nine since birth oh, i would love to have a kid right now but I'm, I'm scared that it would end up like he is just a burden on me and i don't want to get into this personal <laughs> stuff he just disrespected me big time on our new york trip he lied to my italian mother he came home drunk one night and he was goofing around they were staying in my parents basement Jeff mentions that Lana isn't doing what a lot of other celebrities do when they have children and hide them away. And she says that while posting pictures of him every day isn't for them because she's so hands-on with him, he's going to be around. And I gotta say that I really respect her for being a mother and doing these podcasts and continuing with the work that she does and just bringing him along. 
I'm sure some of you guys may disagree with me on there, but when you have a kid, your whole life changes and she seems to be balancing her career and his care as well. Looks like a very happy baby and also a very happy mama. But no, your baby looks different. That's baby a special baby. It doesn't look like every other That's baby that I, I've seen, honestly? especially early on. Mike calls into the show and it immediately becomes hilarious with some banter back and forth between himself and Lana, who says that the majority of their fights while they were together were over her choice in outfits for dinner also oh, yeah. mike mike did this when i hung out with harry jowdy well i would uh, you shouldn't be hanging out with that guy anyway no like as friends <laughs> lana says that the whole time she dated mike was terrible and the only reason they were together was because he forced her Drop mike Maria? don't even start me on gaslighting you gaslighted Michael my mother used to gaslight no, that, that, me. that word doesn't even mean anything that word doesn't even <laughs> says mean anything. the biggest that, manipulator that of the century Honestly, the interactions between Lana and Mike are hilarious and it's refreshing to see couples that are in the spotlight like them just have fun with it and laugh about it all. Obviously, beef and drama makes the internet go round, but seeing exes like this enjoy making fun of each other with neither one of them getting really hurt or offended is kind of fun. You're a godforsaken <sighs> liar. You can't just tell the truth. True. For one yeah, anyway. Your teeth are looking less yellow than usual. <laughs> I look <I> like... <laughs> the conversation of being a spicy worker and then having a child comes up which is definitely an interesting topic and one that we have talked about previously on this channel before lana says that she will be 100 percent transparent with her child and what's more she thinks that parents who have life experiences like that actually make for better parents as she said before she is actually no longer in that industry but of course the internet is forever what is your guys's opinions on that are there any spicy workers who are new mamas or papas in the comments Let's discuss. Lana seems like a cool chick and is doing her thing now with a beautiful baby boy named Milo. In other mama news, the ever trend sitter Trisha Paytas is back on our docket and yet again is spewing her opinions on the Johnny Depp and Amber Heard trial. With the verdict recently announced by the jury of Johnny's success, we are not surprised that Trisha pulled out her two cents to throw into the ring. Obviously, considering her past abuse towards her partners and manipulative and untrue behavior, maybe this is one that she should have considered sitting out of. But then again, who better to make remark on something like this other than someone who has literally done the same thing? Anyway, in a video that she posted to her family channel, which even just the choice of channel, Trisha, what the fuck? She called Johnny Depp wins. Thoughts? But I'm gonna post and do this the same day, so I'm gonna try and do this in one take. I have been very busy today, people have been. Um texting and stuff i just want a busy day i'm sorry has trisha ever given you the impression that when she takes these videos there are takes like has she ever reshot something like this like like the overworked trisha character is strong this week Trisha says that Johnny not showing up to the verdict was a power move and that it's giving I said my truth and it's out there. We saw some other celebrities recently not showing up to court when it was verdict day and it kind of seems to be the thing to do now. Won all his claims. Got 15 million dollars. Trisha, for some reason, decided to film and talk about this before watching the verdict. The reasoning behind this is beyond me. There's a hashtag believe men too. And like, I feel like this is such a huge movement for that because men are victims too. They are. She goes on a bit of a righteous rant about how it's terrible that women are always believed and men aren't and that she's been on both sides of the situation and isn't tiptoeing around the topic at all. It's like, they're very real situations and they I think they're taken so lightly. Um, this is a super important subject matter, but I just cannot with Trisha trying to talk about it. I understand she might be attempting to use her platform for good and spread awareness and talk about important issues, but it's just nearly impossible to fully think that anything she does is with the intention to better the world, as opposed to better herself and just simply jumping on the popularity train. That might be harsh or mean, but we see time and time again when something new becomes trendy, Trisha is right there and I can't can't help but wonder if she ever would have come out and talked about her past within this topic had the Johnny Depp trial never happened. 
you get what I'm saying? Like, Trisha wants to talk about this because it's a hot topic and she knows it'll get her views, but she also knows that, like I said, the internet does not forget and will absolutely bring up her past abusive behavior. So in that, she knows that she can't just act like it never happened without getting severe backlash. So I just wonder, would she be as open and honest and forthright about that past behavior if we didn't have this huge trial in the headlines? Because like I said, I've been on all sides of this, right? I've been in abusive relationships where I've gotten the abuse. I've been in, I've, I've had, a, I've had altercations where I abused a partner on an incident and it was really, really awful and scary and it was my rock bottom. Trisha says that victims lie sometimes and that even though throughout the tapes we heard during this trial, Amber may have said some verbally abusive things, Trisha seems to hold the opinion that Amber was the primary abuser slash aggressor. Unfortunately, we see this a lot with the girl, girl, the girl lying about male abuse. And then I was seeing things like, oh, like we're all doing Amber wrong and stuff, but like she lied. She continues and says that people have been comparing her to Amber and she seems to agree to some extent. Trisha says that she had untreated mental illness for a long time and she believes that Amber does too. Once credibility is gone, once you, either if you exaggerate or let's say you even forget, right? Like I, back in the day when I first started YouTube videos, I hit a lot of my life. People will like take a video from like 2007 and they well, this, you said this never happened. But like the thing was, I was hiding a lot of- See, this is what frustrates the shit out of me because it's like she tries to say, oh, I was just trying to keep things private or oh, I forgot. And it's like a lot of things you've lied about, Trisha, didn't need to be lied about. Like, you have created entire personalities because you like something for a second and then you change your mind and you basically gaslight your entire audience and everyone who calls you out for it but acting like you never did any of it. Trisha goes down a different trans road and says that no matter what she says or does, people that don't like her will find a problem with it. And because of this, she tries to limit the comments and video titles that she reads. When everyone's like, believe all victims, which usually the most hypocritical people, the people who like, believe all victims, unless it's Trish, unless it's that, you know what I mean? She says that she doesn't fully buy into believe all victims, but she says that we should take all victims seriously and look into evidence and make sure it's all true. She doesn't forget to quickly mention that there are, of course, occasions where the incident happened a long time ago or there simply just isn't enough evidence to prove anything. And that quote sucks. Everything I said, once again, I've always said in truth, and I believe in the court system. I truly believe in the court system. Does the court system fail people? Absolutely. Trisha is physically struggling to figure out how to stay on the fence with this one. I've been Amber Heard. I had a mental illness untreated and it's not an excuse. You have to control that shit. You have to get a handle on it. If you have a mental illness, it's something like you have to get a handle on that because you can't just be a menace to society and lying even hurting people. She says that there are treatments and medications and help out there and it's Amber's responsibility to get those. The trial was scary for Trisha to watch because she says that she's been that person. Trisha wraps up her video by throwing the topic to the comment section and telling people to let them know what they think. And they really did. I took a scroll through her comment section just to see how her take was received and the overwhelming majority of the feedback she was given was negative. Most comments commentators are saying something like what we said. One user said, The audacity for Trisha to talk about liars and women abusers and how Amber should go to jail. While Trisha lies constantly and went on frenemies to say that she didn't hit Moses that hard. What the fuck is wrong with her? I would never lie about something serious. So hilarious. Another user said, Don't talk on this. You are not the person to do so. And lastly, someone said, Trish lied about her teacher and it's been proven. Also, Trish, I never lie on people. I don't know, what are your guys' thoughts on Trisha speaking on this issue? Do you think that this is just yet another example of Trisha trying to get views? Do you think that her opinion on this subject is something interesting as she herself has been an abuser? But anyway, that is going to be it for today's video, you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to the Hot Tea channel. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss out. And also follow us on Twitter and send us any deep dive topics or hot tea that you you would like to hear about. And for now, here is my bleach.